A center of excellence is important not only because of what it does itself for its own country, but because of its attraction to others who can learn together in every part of the country and from around the world how better to deal with their own problems. A center of excellence, I think, is a center that you are building throughout the years uh, through the success and through the failures of uh, the history of your institutions. We need centers of excellence in developing regions to help foster development and to create a local critical mass of scientists that will help solve that country or that region's problems. WHO or the World Bank doesn't do that. I mean, they, they may have local offices and they become important interlocutors and purveyors of technical advice. But it's the centers of excellence that are, because they are, you know, they're local, <laughs> they're national, they, they can play this role. The term Center of Excellence describes an institution that targets local or regional problems and is internationally recognized for its research, clinical care, and training. Such centers are vital because they generate new knowledge, shape policy, create leaders, and build partnerships in the region and around the globe. There are many such centers in wealthier nations, but they are rare in countries with fewer resources. One example is the National Institute of Public Health in Cuernavaca, Mexico. Now 25 years old, it has grown from a tiny research effort to become a highly acclaimed institution with national, regional, and even global impact. The great vision of the Mexican experiment in the National Institute of Public Health was to bring together excellence and relevance, to combine the best in research methods with attention to solving the real and pressing problems. And that is a very powerful combination. In 1982, Mexico was in crisis. The government had defaulted on its debt, forcing it to slash spending. The healthcare system, already failing to meet the needs of a changing population, had to become better and cheaper. But the new Minister of Health, Guillermo Soberón, wanted reform based on evidence. So he reached out to the next generation, a few exceptional medical graduates who had gone abroad to study public health. When I became a dean at the Harvard School of Public Health, uh, in the summer of 1984, one of the first meetings I had was with a doctoral student, Jaime Sepulveda, and he brought with him a colleague named Julio Frank. And the idea that they came with was the start of a new center at that time in Mexico City uh, that would focus on improving health. With backing from Soberon and help from partners like Harvard, the new Center for Public Health Research was born. It focused on producing evidence to support policy around major health problems. Then came the next crisis. In 1985, powerful earthquakes rocked Mexico City, killing 10,000 and devastating the nation's centralized health system. One in four hospital beds were lost. The minister turned to us and said, I want you to start planning the reconstruction. And that was a turning point for us because a lot of the skeptics that were saying, you know, this is a luxury, suddenly people realized we were actually useful. As the country emerged from the crisis, the center became the seed around which a new, larger entity was formed. In 1987, it merged with the traditional School of Public Health to create the Instituto Nacional de Salud Pública, the National Institute of Public Health. The School of uh, Public Health, created in 1922, was the training place for public health officers. And from then to the 1980s, it did pretty much the same. When we came, we wanted to have a new approach, a new approach that would have um, a clear research agenda, that would have um, a new generation of uh, students trained in those principles and methods. That was a pretty transformative change. Over the next two decades, the Institute grew to three campuses and seven centers. It has become a leader in educational methods, particularly in using technology in the classroom and online. We really wanted to innovate more in the techniques, in the resources, in the pedagogy that we use in the classes. And uh, with that, we are very happy because we are able to really reach the population that we want. The Institute attracts students and scholars from throughout the region and world. 
In 2006, it became the first non-U.S. institution accredited by the U.S. Council on Education for Public Health. The impact of the Institute is far-reaching, with a research portfolio that regularly drives policy. Armed with studies showing damaging levels of secondhand smoke, the Institute advised the government to move forward with policies restricting tobacco use and heavily taxing cigarettes. Another research team was able to modify a vaccine program against HPV, the virus that causes cervical cancer, making it more affordable and allowing Mexico to become one of the first countries to offer universal protection. Additionally, new mapping techniques designed by the Institute's Center for Infectious Diseases have enabled public health authorities to fight outbreaks of vector-borne disease faster and more efficiently. One of the most important health reforms in recent years is Seguro Popular, a universal insurance plan that has benefited more than 50 million Mexicans. Experts at the Institute help shape the program and are currently evaluating its effectiveness. Today, one of the most serious challenges facing Mexico is obesity, and the Institute's response is multifaceted. The Center for Nutrition and Health, led by Juan Rivera, has had a very profound impact in policy. Recently, we have been participating in a, um, the design of a national strategy for the prevention of obesity, which uh, also includes uh, the regulation of foods in the school environment. So we helped design those programs and we have made recommendations on how to improve the implementation of the program in order to be able to have more effects. The Institute is also leading a national debate on taxing sugar-sweetened beverages. We are one of the largest consumers of, of sodas in the world, and we are also one of the countries with the largest prevalence of obesity and overweight. So for us, it is very, very important to find the structural interventions. The, the Institute is, is successful because it provides clear and sound advice to the Ministries of Health or the ministers of, of the states, and it, in this sense, is accountable. We have many success stories in which the Institute has been key for policy development, has been key for policy evaluation, or, or has been key for training the people that the system needs. It was well planned since the beginning, so where to focus, where to go, and they train people to uh, become what they are now. These very interesting, important group of people, they were good enough to attract some other good people to become part of this community. So right now, you know, a big challenge is to provide competitive salaries because part of being in global networks is you enter into global labor markets. Public and help us is, is the funding, you know? and, and in that sense, we need to secure funding to open new positions, either from federal funds, either for private funds. One modality we do not have in Mexico is that of uh, an endowment. I strongly believe we need endowed chairs, and I would propose that we should have the Carlos Slim public health chair or the Bill Gates uh, health research uh, chair, that is the kind of uh, support that will help in keeping this institution sustainable. We, we just turned 25 years. At the Institute, we are really proud of these 25 years because uh, we made a very solid institution, a center of excellence for Mexico and for the region. The experience of the National Institute of Public Health demonstrates that it is possible to bridge some of these divides that we sometimes present as insurmountable, the divide between excellence and relevance. You can do both between analysis and action. You can actually have analysis that guides action between the local and the global. You can have globally connected and locally uh, grounded institutions. Um, and it is mostly a statement that development is possible. Where there was nothing or very little, you now have a flourishing institution. And uh, I think it is a statement of hope uh, for the future. I think the National Institute of Public Health in Mexico, it's a beautiful case study. How an idea and a vision we had many years ago led 5, 10, 25 years later 
to a transformative place. I would say it has uh, had a measurable impact in public health, in policies in Mexico, and I also think it has the capacity to do that in a larger regional base and hopefully for the world.